What is going on, my family? Your boy Demetrius is back with another Tekken 8 video. In this video here, we are just going to have to talk about the whole situation going on with the return of Heihachi Mushima. Now, I spoke about this briefly on the live that I did a few days ago. Right now, the whole Heihachi frenzy that's going on in the Tekken community, it's, it's, it's sky high right now. I think it's, it's a mixed bag right now. A lot of people are excited. A lot of people are not happy. A lot of people are kind of like in between. I'm one of those people. I am really, I'm stunned. I'm really in between about it. It's like, I'm not happy about it, but at the same time, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying it's bullshit that Hey Hachi is returned, but it's like, I'm really in between. Like, you know, now the thing about with Hey Hachi returning is that I have a lot of questions. You know, I have a lot of questions when it comes to Heihachi returning. The reason that I have these questions is because when it came to Tekken 8 and the base roster, that was the biggest, biggest issue when it came to Tekken 8 before it was released. Nobody liked how the base roster looked. I guess you could say 65% of the community did not like the base roster. They did not like the character selection that Bandai Namco had put on the base roster. The reason for it is, is because Heihachi Mushima was not there. I understand that. I was like, okay, Heihachi's not there, but everybody knew that Heihachi died at the end of Tekken 7. Or so, that's what we all thought, right? So, Harada basically comes out and said, Heihachi Mushima is officially dead. We all know this. Harada said it himself. And I keep telling y'all, I know I use the horse's mouth term a lot, but also I be telling y'all, sometimes... When it comes to certain things in Tekken, Harada is not to be trusted when he talks about certain things. You feel what I'm saying? And I was one of those people that took his word when he said that Heihachi Mushima was officially dead. And I'm going to be all the way real with y'all. Before Heihachi was revealed, look, I wanted Heihachi in the base roster, you know what I'm saying, or whatever. But I'm going to keep it all the way real. Like Tekken 8 was kind of doing well without Heihachi. You feel what I'm saying? And, you know, the reason that I feel that is because they had a great story going on. Everybody always wanted to know the outcome between Jin and Kazuya. You feel what I'm saying? And with Heihachi gone, that was going to be the filler. That was going to be the void for Heihachi being gone. And I was impressed with that. I was impressed that Bandai Namco was able to do that. You feel what I'm saying? They were able to fill a lot of voids with Heihachi being gone. Now, with Heihachi coming back, there's just a lot of questions. The question is, why is Heihachi coming back so soon? That's the question. Also, too, as you see the trailer, when I watched the trailer, the trailer was just like, I really didn't understand what was going on. Clearly, Heihachi is going to be a focal point of the new story DLC, but and what magnitude you feel what i'm saying and like how much sense is it gonna make for heihachi to be in this story you feel what i'm saying and as i was watching the trailer there were a couple of things that stood out in the trailer number one the trailer was very mortal combat like y'all feel what i'm saying it was very mortal combat like i guess you know a character coming back from the dead you know you know vintage mortal combat shit i noticed that even though there is a significant difference when it comes to Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat characters come back from the dead because of timeline or some type of realm sorcery. Y'all feel what I'm saying? So that's not going on when it comes to Tekken 8, which makes me kind of like scratch my head. Like, why is this all happening? You feel what I'm saying? You know, I always thought if Heihachi was going to come back, he's just going to come back. You know, he wasn't going to be a part of the story, no character interactions or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I didn't think that they were going to incorporate Heihachi like this this early. And to be quite honest with you, I'm confused. Now, a lot of people are probably like, why? Well, you know, I just happen to be one of those people that are. But I also noticed, too, with the trailer is that I guess you could say he died. He clearly did die. Because if you see how Heihachi looks, you see the big scar that Kazuya, you know, from the Kazuya punch, it's there, but it's all like healed up and shit. You feel what I'm saying? And if you take a look at Heihachi, 
You take a look at Heihachi coming out of the lava the way that he does. I said this in the live. I said this in the live. Heihachi is not a man. I think Heihachi is the devil himself, and I think he is the man that is spreading the devil gene. I mean, it makes perfect sense. A lot of people were like, no, it's Kazumi. Kazumi's doing it. No. The man percolates. You got to understand that. The man percolates. So when Heihachi had sex with Kazumi, he infected her with it. You feel what I'm saying? And that's how Kazumi had Kazuya, I guess, or whatever. That's how that shit happened. So I think it's all coming from Heihachi. I really do. Because you had Kazuya, you had Jin, he had it. Now you have Reina, Lars, fuck him, I don't care. But, you know, and whoever else Heihachi fathered out there. And that leads to other questions. Why was Heihachi historically always trying to get rid of the devil gene when clearly it's starting to look like he's the one spreading it? You know, he tried to kill Kazuya because Kazuya had it. He tried to kill Jin because Jin had it. You feel what I'm saying? So now what? Is he going to come after his daughter because his daughter has it? You know, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm just confused. Like, what's going on? Is it some type of uh, awakening now that another devil gene is out there? Is that the reason why Heihachi's coming back? Reina done transformed, so all of a sudden, here Heihachi comes back because there's another devil gene? Like, it's just too much going on. Right now, it's clutter. I know a lot of people are excited about this, but it is clutter going on right now, thanks to Heihachi coming back. This is clutter. I'm sorry, everybody. You know, this is clutter. You know, I'm not, this is not a thumbs down, but you know what I'm saying? It's just way, it's just a lot of shit going on here. That's another question right there. I kind of feel like Heihachi is some form of Lucifer, some form of Mephistopheles. Heihachi is definitely not a man. All y'all got to do is just look at how he came out of that lava. That was, that was satanic. That was devilish. Like, who comes out of lava like that? Y'all got to think about that. I, I think Heihachi is a true devil. I think that's I think he is the true devil, not the gene, but I think he's Mephistopheles himself. You know what I'm saying? But that's just a question. It's not carved in stone, but it's a question that I feel like Harada needs to answer. Harada needs to tell us how Heihachi has come back like this. You know what I'm saying? Resurrected. You feel what I'm saying? Now, the word resurrection basically means someone did die. And they were bought back in some type of way, whether it be spiritual or whatever. So we got to keep that in mind as well. You know, resurrection. You feel what I'm saying? If it's a resurrection, you know, is this the the original Heihachi? You know what I'm saying? Because when you're resurrected, you don't always have to be the original character. You feel what I'm saying? So is this the Heihachi of Tekken 7, Tekken 6? You know, is this the Heihachi or is this some other spiritual Heihachi resurrected in Heihachi's body? You feel what I'm saying? To be quite honest with you, resurrection is not the real uh, word I would use when it comes to Heihachi. I would use the word reincarnate. I think Heihachi has been reincarnated. I would use that word instead of resurrection. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, resurrection doesn't really have to necessarily mean this is the same Heihachi, but reincarnation, we can kind of say, okay, yeah, this is the same Heihachi. But like I said, a lot of confusion there, a lot of confusion. Obviously, Heihachi is going to affect the game. And I also want to say something about this whole reveal. Uh, like I said, I was stunned. I'm still stunned now, but I personally thought that this reveal I didn't like how they revealed this. I didn't think that they were going to reveal a DLC character, even though it was Evo. I didn't think that they were going to do that because y'all got to remember, Lydia was not technically out yet. So I'm looking at it like, why would they reveal any character? I know a lot of people thought it was going to be Mardok because they were listening to that fucking data mine. I did not think that they were going to reveal a character because Lydia, you know, this was Lydia's moment. I thought Evo was Lydia's moment. They were going to have a big showing for Lydia and Lydia was just going to take the whole Evo over. That was not the case. They turned around. They released the third DLC character and they practically stole the thunder away from Lydia. Y'all feel what I'm saying? Why would they do that? 
I mean, not a lot of people are thinking about this because it's Bandai Namco, it's Tekken, and you know. But why would they do that? This is why I say this was kind of ill timed. I don't, I didn't like the timing of this because this should have been Lydia's moment, and this reveal of Hey Hachi just took that away. I feel now, as of right now, a lot of people are covering Lydia. You know, I'm seeing a lot of things, a lot of Lydia activity. But I just kind of feel like when it came to Evo, the Evo weekend, Lydia got her thunder taken from her with this Heihachi reveal. I don't understand why they did that. No one is talking about that. But I thought that wasn't right. I just thought that just was not cool that they are not even just Heihachi, any character. They shouldn't have revealed any character. You feel what I'm saying? But they did. And I just kind of feel like they just kind of they fucked with Lydia a little bit. I don't like that they did that. But as of right now, Harada pretty much can do whatever the fuck he wants. Like, you know, that whole there's no 3D competition. So, you know, Harada is just really just putting whatever out there and people are just liking it because they don't really have anywhere else to go. Or I don't know. You feel what I'm saying? So now I'm going to get to my final point on why I believe that. This whole thing that is happening when it comes to Heihachi is just basically damage control by the Tekken team and by Bandai Namco. Now, you know, this is just a belief. You feel what I'm saying? A belief that just happens to fit the facts. Uh, as a lot of people may know, uh, Bandai Namco has reportedly lost a lot of money over the last couple of months. Surprisingly, y'all feel what I'm saying? Not only that. The Tekken shop still is not working out. People are not really feeling the Tekken shop. The shit that's going on with that feature is just, you know, it's just unacceptable. People are not accepting it. People are not buying things from it like Bandai Namco would like. Then also, too, you know, last couple of months here and there, you know, people have been complaining about Tekken 8, the gameplay and all of that. Some people love it. Some people hate it. You know what I'm saying? So you got that to factor in whether you love it or hate it. You know, it's OK to have an opinion. You feel what I'm saying? I'm one of those people. I love Tekken 8. I just hate the fucked up things that are going on with the game. You feel what I'm saying? So all of that going into play. And then, of course, you got to look at the base roster. Then, of course, you got to look at the DLC characters and you just got to factor all of that in. And remember what I told you, Harada sees everything that's happening. He sees and hears everything that's going on when it comes to the Tekken community. And I really do think that he, the Tekken team, Bandai Namco, all of that, they felt it was time for some damage control. And what better way to control the damage and paste everything back together than to bring back Heihachi Mushima? You feel what I'm saying? Not Mardok. Don't bring back Lei Wulong. Let's bring back Heihachi. Let's bring back the character that we said was dead. Is it a genius move by Bandai Namco? <sighs> you know, that's yet to be determined. You feel what I'm saying? Like I said, it's a mixed bag right now when it comes to Heihachi. But, you know, I just kind of feel like the reveal was too soon. Heihachi coming back was too soon. You know, it should have been another character. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, they should not have revealed anything this soon. So, like I said, this was ill-timed. It was fucked up what they did to Lydia. And so, like I said, it's damage control. Heihachi is clearly damage control. You know, they're trying to get things back on the right track when it comes to Tekken 8. They have been doing a lot better. There's still room for improvement. But I kind of feel like with Heihachi coming back, this almost kind of seems like a pacifier move. You feel what I'm saying? It just feels like Harada is really trying to pacifier the community until they come up with the ultimate plan or until they come up with something that can really satisfy us when it comes to the game, when it comes to us believing that they are going to fix the things that we want them to fix. You feel what I'm saying? It's really seeming like a pacifier situation when it comes to Heihachi. Maybe I'm tripping, but like I said, Heihachi right now, it just seems like damage control and it seems like a pacifier. That's all I'm saying. And for the people that main Heihachi in the past, you know, I'm happy for those people that they get their main character back into the game. But like I said, after everything that has happened when it comes to Tekken 8, why now? Why now? You feel what I'm saying? Why now? I just don't get it. If this was season three, season four, I'd be like, oh, hey, Hachi back. Oh, OK, I understand, you know. But why now? Why so soon? This is way too soon. 
That's my opinion. That's my belief. So I want to hear it from y'all. What do y'all think about this whole situation when it comes to Heihachi Mushima? You know, I understand Harada and Michael Murray. They did an interview with IGN. I did not watch that interview. You feel what I'm saying? Because I'm just still stunned by everything right now. Um, do y'all think Heihachi coming back is damage control, a pacifier situation, or I don't know. Is this some type of gimmickry put up by Harada? You feel what I'm saying? I, it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy. I really don't understand it. But I will say this. Everybody is talking about the next character. Everybody think it's going to be Fakaram. I don't think it's going to be Fakaram. I hope it's not Fakaram. It's got to be a female character because that's clearly the pattern here. And I still think it's going to be Anna. They going to bring Heihachi back. It's got to be Anna. Because if you pay attention to what's going on with this DLC season one, it's Eddie, Lydia, Heihachi, and it's got to be Anna. It's got to be Anna. Now, everybody's saying Kuni Mitsu. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if Kuni Mitsu was the fourth one because if you really pay attention to Heihachi in this trailer, he had a Kuni Mitsu like mask on. So, Kuni Mitsu could be a possibility. I ain't going to sit here in front. Kuni Mitsu could be a possibility to come back and, uh, for the fourth slot, but I still think it's going to be Anna. Let me know what y'all think. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to your boy for the hottest tech and A action on the internet, period. I will get back at you in the next video. My name is Demetrius. God bless. Stay safe. I am out. Peace. Oh,